We are in Unterin in Renon, at the largest wafer producers in Italy. Here in this production site the choco and snacks are produced in the flavors of coconut, hazelnut, milk and cereals and recently coffee and dark chocolate. It is the realm of Peter Tauferer. For 15 years he has worked at the confectionery specialists. Since two and a half years as production manager he is responsible for 180 employees. I was actually trained as a journeyman mechanic. I tried my hand at other activities and then, thanks to my technical training, I landed a job at Loacher. I was given the opportunity to go to Germany for further training. Furthermore, I also went to evening school and received further instruction. All of this gave me the opportunity of taking over the role of production manager. Everything here works automatically. Nevertheless, in the air there is a sweet aroma of baked goods. Employees work in three shifts, from Monday 4 a.m. to Friday 11 p.m. Production is non-stop on a 24-hour cycle, except for Saturday and Sunday. These two days are to rest. I started 4 a.m. this week. If we don't work during the weekend, then we need to start at 4 a.m. on Mondays. Turn on and prepare all the machines so that all the machines are functioning for when the other people come in at 6 a.m. and we can start producing. And this week I'm working from 4 a.m. until midday. And the next week I'll start at midday and finish at 8 p.m. The production of the snacks spans multiple interlinked processes. And it begins with the base, with the production of the wafer mixture. Loacher has only one wafer recipe. That is quite unique in the whole world. Loker's wafer is either dark or light colored, yet we only have one recipe for it. You can picture it the following way. It is as though you were baking a cake at home. You mix the ingredients and you obtain the wafer dough. The wafer sheets are baked for two minutes at a constant temperature of 180 degrees Celsius. The still warm sheets come over a conveyor belt from the oven and get sprinkled with a smooth white chocolate cream. You can picture it the following way. It is as though you are spreading jam on a morning toast. The cream is spread the same way on the wafer. On this with cream covered leaf, two more layers are stacked. The still warm waffle block gains some structure and is transported at one second intervals over the rollers. Now the product receives its distinctive feature. The wafer is sprinkled evenly with white crisp cereals. In order to get the snacks correct consistency, the wafer blocks come into the cooling channel where they cool down for 15 minutes. Once the cooling phase is over, the way of the layered and sprinkled wafers continues towards the cutter. Once there, the blocks are cut into individual portions. They are cut up to the point where the portions are vacuumed away by the robot. The robot then displays the products in line and these are then covered with chocolate. Now the most interesting and also most difficult process happens. The portions are covered with tempered chocolate. You can picture it the following way. It is as though you were running through a curtain. The product runs back and forth through a chocolate curtain, leaving it covered in chocolate. In the next process, the excess chocolate is blown and rounded off. This is what results in the typical surface of the chocolate snack. The irregular surface is actually the distinctive trait of the chocolate snack, which results from this process. The chocolate cover portions now go for 10 minutes through a 30 meter long cooling channel. There are up to 400 pieces per minute. You can see it quite clearly from the coating, how an extra layer of decorative chocolate is added. After this process, the products run through a cooling chamber. The hardly cooled snacks now go into a specifically designed 10-foot store. In one line, there is between 20 to 25 different machines which all work together. If one machine doesn't work, the others won't work either. That's why it's extremely important to have the control somewhere in the middle to stop the delays in the packaging to some extent. That's it! The choco snack is finished and ready to be enjoyed.
but first it has to be 100% airtightly packed. I need to check if a sheet is on top, if it's the right one with the correct date. I also need to check if the product is okay, that the machine is reasonably clean. I only work during the early shift, but for that reason I do a bit of everything. I help out in various areas. I'm a flexible worker. The machinery is highly technological. Technical knowledge and expertise is presumed of the staff. Part of the machines were built directly here, while the others were built together with machine manufacturers and used in the production phase. Packed this way, we know the snacks. Now it's time to assemble them. Therefore, the individually packed snacks run at a record pace over a steep treadmill in the lower level. As we don't have that much space for a production plant in Renon, we couldn't build one on a production layout on one story. Furthermore, we also had to consider the developments which took place over the course of the years. We've grown from a small to a large plant. This resulted in building the production line vertically, over many levels, affecting how the plant and layout were designed and built. Here the snacks are now packed into display boxes. This way the customer encounters them subsequently on the shelf. But until this happens, until the snack are sent from Unterin in Renon to 102 countries throughout the world, there is still a long logistical process before them. But more about this in the coming week on The Long Way of a Snack from Unterin in the World.